I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, March the 23rd, 2015. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has received nominations from 67 Knesset members, a number surpassing an absolute majority, giving him the right to now form a government. Israel's President Reuven Rivlin met with representatives of the elected parties yesterday and today. 67 of them endorsed Netanyahu, including the Kulanu Party, led by Moshe Kahlon, and the Israel Beitenu Party, led by Avigdor Lieberman. The Yeshatid party told Rivlin they would not be recommending anyone for the role, indicating they would be sitting in the opposition in the Knesset. The Zionist Union party, led by Isaac Herzog, will also be sitting in the opposition. The United States did not speak today at the United Nations Human Rights Council debate on alleged Israeli violations of human rights in the Palestinian territories. The move is said to be part of an agreement the U.S. has had with Israel since 2013 not to speak on Agenda 7, which Israel's foreign ministry said negatively singles out Israel and Israel every year asks its friends on the council not to express themselves. Ministry spokesman Emmanuel Nachshon said the American delegation was not present at the debate, quote, at Israel's request. Seven Jewish children who were killed in a house fire in Brooklyn early Saturday morning were laid to rest today in Israel. A funeral was held in Brooklyn yesterday for the Sasson children. 16-year-old Elian, 13-year-old Rivka, 12-year-old David, 10-year-old Yehoshua, 8-year-old Moshe, 6-year-old Sarah, and 5-year-old Yaakov. The bodies of the children were then flown to Israel and buried at the Har HaMenuchot Cemetery in Jerusalem this afternoon. The mother of the children, Gail Sasson, and 15-year-old daughter Tsipora managed to escape the blaze jumping out of a window. They remain in critical condition. The grief-stricken father of the children, Gabriel, was away at a conference at the time of the fire. The fire is believed to have been caused by a hot plate in the kitchen that was on for the Sabbath. Six people were arrested following an incident at a London synagogue early yesterday when about 20 young intoxicated men and women tried to get into the Ahavat Torah synagogue in Stamford Hill while reportedly screaming anti-Semitic remarks and throwing things at the doors and windows. One Jewish man was lightly injured trying to keep the group out. The synagogue's rabbi, Maurice David, told reporters that the attack was likely not religiously motivated and was just an example of, quote, antisocial behavior. The incident is being investigated further. Some 20 gravestones were vandalized in a Jewish cemetery in northern Hungary over the weekend. And according to local reports, human remains were also taken out of two crypts and scattered in the area. Hungarian news agency MTI reported that one of the deputy mayors in Giongos visited the city's Jewish cemetery on Sunday, offering help to repair the damage. Assistance was also offered from the Catholic Church. And Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban called the desecration barbaric, and the deputy state secretary promised to take action to prevent such attacks in the future. A team of archaeologists and researchers have found what they believe was a hideout built to be intended to be used by the Nazis deep in the jungles of Argentina. German artifacts from World War II were found in three structures in the Teyucuare Park in the country's north near its border with Paraguay. University of Buenos Aires' Daniel Chavelson told local paper Clarín that halfway through the war, the Nazis built shelters for top leaders in the event of defeat, in remote places like the middle of deserts and mountains or in the middle of a jungle. The refuge was believed to have been prepared by the Nazis in the early 1940s, but not used. And looking now at some entertainment news, legendary soul R&B and pop singer Dionne Warwick will be hitting the stage in Tel Aviv this spring. The 74-year-old, whose hits include I'll Say a Little Prayer, will perform at the Menorah Miftachim Arena in Tel Aviv on May the 19th. And last week at the South by Southwest Music Festival in Austin, Texas, Jewish rapper Koshadils hosted his 8th annual Oy Vey SXSW Showcase. The 10-day South by Southwest annual music film and interactive festival takes place every March. This year it had over 72,000 registrants. 
Kosha Dills, who was recently featured in Billboard magazine and known as the, quote, hardest working guy in hip hop, is playing 15 shows at the event, spreading support for Israel and his Jewish heritage everywhere he goes. And looking now at our JBS programming for tonight, Monday, March the 23rd, at 8 o'clock, a discussion on how to raise Jewish children with a love and understanding of Israel, with Deputy Consul General Amir Sagi and others from Gesher Shalom Congregation, the JCC of Fort Lee, New Jersey. Then at 9, Executive Director of the JCC Manhattan and former President of the Reconstructionist Rabbinical Association, Joe Levitt, talks about the nature of Jewish education today. And at 10, author of When Bad Things Happen to Good People, Rabbi Harold Kushner, discusses his latest book, Overcoming Life's Disappointments. That's from the 92nd Street Y. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, March the 23rd, 2015. I'm Tisha Bader.